Hey everyone, Sean from Dungeon Printer here. First of all, I know it's been a while since my last video. Between crunch time at work and troubleshooting the transform, I haven't really had time or ambition to make any videos. But recently I had a few of you reaching out to me after Uncle Jesse's video and after he was kind enough to shout out the channel and talk about the problems I've been having with the transform. So instead of answering the same questions for the few of you who've reached out, I figured I'd just do a video. So this is what's been happening, what I've tried so far, and what the next steps are. First of all, I wanted to point out that I have gotten prints to work on this machine. It hasn't been a complete brick. I showed you guys my Lost Dragons prints before, and for the most part, these turned out really, really great. The only issue with the Frostfather here was some supports failed and we lost a Talon and some of the wing on this portion here. And for the Red Dragon mounted head, we had a little bit of separation in the back, but nothing that would be fully noticeable once this thing was mounted anyway. And, and for all intents and purposes, the quality on these is really good and I'm really happy with it. The problem is, out of 7 kilograms of the TR250 from Frozen that I got with the machine, these are the only two prints that I have to show for it, because everything else failed. Which is not a sustainable ratio when resins is expensive. So my first thought was that my build plate might be warped, since when I went to level it, no matter how hard I pushed on all four corners, I could never get the paper snug in each of the corners. The top left and bottom right would be very snug, but then I could only get one of the remaining corners somewhat snug and the other one would just flop around loosely. So I went on to Amazon and bought a little tool to see if I could figure out if the build plate was warped at all and from everything I could tell, it's not. So the only thing I can think of there is maybe something in the machine is not quite level where the build plate comes down, but would that be causing these issues? It's hard to say because I do have successful prints. The next thing I thought is maybe the machine's not getting enough power and my LED array is underperforming. So I went back onto Amazon and bought one of these little power testers and tested them in every socket of my apartment, uh, in the power strips, in non-power strips, just to see if everything was consistent, and it is. Now I've been talking to other Transform users as well, getting their profiles, actually slicing files and sending it to them and having us both print them using the same machine and the same resin. And the results were that theirs came out perfect and mine, well, didn't. <laughs> And not only did mine not come out perfect, but it was still failing at double the exposure time and even triple the exposure time. One gentleman who helped me test was getting perfect results with Monocure Clear at 5 second layers. And even at 12, 13, 14 second layers, mine was still inconsistent and failing most of the time. And I even thought that his could be an anomaly with an extra bright LED array for some reason. But recently Uncle Jesse even posted his profile to the Facebook group and trying that, mine also failed miserably. As you saw in one of my previous videos, I changed the FEP film just to make sure any of the cloudiness on the film wasn't screwing up any of my more recent results. And I even tried different resin mixtures. Obviously the TR250 had some results that worked. I tried Monocure Clear by itself with some Flex 100 mixed in. And I got some prints to work, but it was still at higher exposure times than anybody else I'd seen in the community. And still inconsistent at best. So during this time, I've been reaching out to Frozen Support and trying to get some answers from them. Uh, and it's been, I don't even want to say it's been a lot of back and forth because it's been a more, way more forth than back. And over the course of the last seven weeks, there really hasn't been a whole lot of help. That is until yesterday when I finally got word from them that they're going to send me a replacement LCD screen. I sent them videos of the array and the testing and they seem to think that the LED array is good. So we're going to start with the screen and go from there. Now it's taken a while to get to this point. I don't think seven weeks is super great on the customer support side, but they are doing something about it and we gotta start somewhere. So I appreciate that at least, and that's our next step. So once I get the new LCD screen in, uh, I'm gonna fire it back up, try some more tests, and hopefully we can get some things working. I haven't been sitting completely idle though. All the issues with the transform have kind of reignited my love for the photon, which I'll admit I've neglected over the last few weeks. But recently I started printing up some more of my Kickstarter and Patreon models, and especially with the combined 10 kilograms of monocure that I bought in preparation for the transform, I've been happy to get some prints off of there and get some, well, good results. So I wanted to show off a few models really quick from some of the people that I follow on Patreon, just because I really like the work that they're doing, and I'm happy to see dedicated, cool models coming out every month. First one I want to show off is the Griffsteed. I think I said that right. Uh, and this one here, came from the Artisan Guild. It's actually a variant of the horse that they did. 
Uh, this one did require supports, but it did come in two pieces. We got a nice little base with hoof marks to insert him into. And of course the horse itself. And this was all done in a 70-30 mix with uh, the Monocure Clear and Flex 100. Uh, the next models I printed recently came from Rocket Pig Games. And the thing I really appreciate about Rocket Pig is that they make really detailed models that are almost always support free. When I say support free, I mean literally slap them on the plate and hit go. As you can see from the plate here, there's not a support on these things and all I really had to do was peel them off the plate, wash them and be done. So I did a set of their Mind Slayer, which you can hopefully see here. You can see on the Photon, the details came out really, really great. Look at the points on that thing there. I don't know if you can get this better. It's super, super good quality, sculpts, and no supports. And it's kind of hard to go wrong with that combination. And the next one I printed, I got off their shop, which were some Raven folk that I'll be using for an upcoming campaign. And other than that, I've got about $300 worth of Kickstarter pledges that have recently ended or will be ending soon. So I think I might have a problem. But until I get help for it, we've got a lot of things to print. And that includes the Amazon set, the new set that just started today by Rocket Pig, volume two of the Bestiary, one that I thought was just an amazing value with the uh, Winds of Wintertide, which was only $25 for All In. Another great value by Mia Kay with her spooky tabletop miniatures. Catastrophes of Blightmoor, and of course Danny Herrero and Crew's Lost Adventures, which I'm excited for because everything that I've printed so far that's worked came from the Lost Dragons, which was their last Kickstarter. So Danny, uh... Keep up the good work. So, that's it for now. Uh, I hope to have another update soon. I haven't gotten a shipping notification for when the LCD screen will come in but I'm really tired of this thing not working, so I will be testing it as soon as possible. And if it doesn't work, then we'll go from there and try the next thing. I will say I'm really happy to see that mine seems to be the only lemon of the bunch so far, at least within the community on Facebook. I've been seeing a lot of really great prints from different people. Obviously, we all saw Uncle Jesse's videos showing his great successes immediately out of the box. And it makes me really hopeful that this product is gonna be really great once I get whatever my issue is taken care of. So, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking with me through my long absences while I get this thing figured out. Thanks for all the shout outs and all the subscriptions and likes. I really appreciate it. it. Gives me motivation to keep making these videos, even when the only thing I can make in that is a brick of resin. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time.